First of all, I want to introduce myself. Uh, I work as a trusted advisor and uh, consultant in Italy and uh, all around Europe and lately in the US. More than 20 years in, uh, in the IT industry. I I'm saying 20 years, probably it's 25 now, but it's a lot that I have this slide uh, at the beginning of my presentation. I started with Assembler at the end of the 80s, and then C, and then uh, I became a sysadmin, and blah, 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 all the career up to the analyst kind of stuff. So really, I, I am on the other side now. And uh, something that I, I always say is that that boat, I built that boat from scratch. I, I, uh, I built the design and, uh, and then the hood and whatever, and uh, it took me three years and a half. So I'm really, I'm really proud of that. And uh, you can find me on uh, Twitter all day long, on <laughs> juku.it and uh, on other such matters. So I want to start about uh, uh, something that happened to me a couple of weeks ago about my uh, dishwasher. So I found a pound, uh, a pond un uh, under the, this appliance coming uh, at home and it was uh, all this water. And I said, okay, good. I go and I change the dishwasher. It has 10 years. My house turned 10 uh, a few months ago. So, so this is the right time. I just repaired that, uh, that machine uh, a few months uh, ago. So I, uh, I go to the, to the store right uh, after the, the discovery of the, of the water. And uh, was, uh, I started looking at all these appliances and actually I found that uh, nothing is changing in the last 10 years. And everything is identical. So same chassis, same uh, uh, buttons, same, same everything. Yeah, something has changed. And it's, uh, so you can now buy A plus instead of A or A plus plus appliances. And you can buy an appliance that is uh, instead of a 12 set of uh, plates, it, uh, you, you can put 13. Or you can wash with uh, 11 liters of water instead of 12. But actually, minor changes in 10 years. So I started to talk with a... Uh, with the girl at the store about TCO. So that, well, you, you are proposing me to buy a new uh, dishwasher, and it costs uh, the same money that I spent uh, 10 years ago to get instead of over a, uh, an A+. Plus. Okay. So y you know that, that uh, the tag that you find in uh, all the dishwashers on, the, on all the appliances. So we get this A to A+. Plus, and uh, I found that it's 10 kilowatts per year. So this is a big difference. But the problem is that they ask you 15 more euros to get from A to A+. Plus. Same identical model, just from A to A+. Plus. And I need 20 years to repay that 50 more euros. That's incredible. So TCO is a joke. In this case, so I can buy something, I can give you more money, and I, in 20 years I will, mm, I will uh, have another appliance. Probably I won't repay that appliance uh, all the time. And this is what happens with vendors. So vendors come to you and they talk about TCO all the time. I also talk about TCO many times on my blog, but actually sometimes it's ridiculous. On the other side you have people asking you all the time about doing more stuff, and you're fighting with the end users, you're fighting with, uh, with the business. And, uh, and the problem is that they ask this, but really, what you can do is this. Okay. Because traditional IT is broken. So there are minor changes year after year. You can get uh, minor announcements you can pay the same for something more, or you can pay less to have the same that you, you bought three years ago, two years ago. So we, we have seen some changes also in the, in the storage space. 
like introduction of uh, flash, for example, in our arrays. It's good. You can go faster, much faster than in the past. Even if you had flash in a traditional array, you go faster. It's like A and A plus. So you, you pay something to get uh, a speed bump. OK, good. But going faster is not, uh, is not enough. It's only the tip of the iceberg. It's, uh, there is a big problem. Because if you want to change the way you do uh, IT, Okay, you, you need a big leap. And, and the problem is, there are many trends happening in this industry. One of these is analytics. So, yeah, I'm to, I totally agree with Martin that we are still using Excel files. I have many, many customers. He, he said, we, are, we do reporting with Excel. I have customers that maps loans and ports in their arrays with Excel. Still today, they have the GUIs, they have a common line interface, but they are still have this huge, huge uh, Excel file, and, uh, and they are at the core of their team. If they lose that file, they don't have a clue on how to remap everything. So, but uh, something is changing. So we can collect a lot of data from our arrays. We can collect a lot of data from our switches. We can collect a lot of data from our machines, and uh, we put them together and get uh, uh, information. And uh, uh, as we have said many times, there are many, many features in our uh, infrastructure. So there are basic services. Okay? In the storage world, I come from storage, so uh, I try to use this, uh, this analogy. So you have basic data services. Okay? Everyone has basic data services. I'm talking about data protection. Are you buying storage without RAID of same kind? No, probably not. And you have data services like, for example, Snapshot. We, we, we told this morning, Snapshot is no more uh, a particular feature. It's a feature that everyone has. So there is nothing special here. But we have system analytics. And we are starting to see uh, this system collecting sensors. They send it to the cloud and actually uh, through the cloud, you can do uh, actions to the system, and this improves TCO. But it's not enough. We are seeing uh, some companies starting talking about data analytics. So they are digging into your data, and they are finding information that are useful to improve the business. The problem is that if you are using your system today to do analytics, you need a lot of uh, CPU, and the problem is that you can't scale. So, for example, I was with a vendor a few days ago, and they told me that uh, from each single system, they collect more than 80, 90 megabytes of data per system per day. So, if we can uh, multiply that for the number of systems that we can potentially have, it could be a problem. Okay, it's, you, and there is something more about the fact that if you, so the second uh, trend, the fact that most of these systems now are starting to send this data, this analytics to the cloud. Why? Because looking at your system has a value. Looking at your system and comparing it to other systems all around the world has another value because you you have a picture uh, where you are, and you have a picture where you are compared to all the others. So for capacity planning, other people already seen your growth. And uh, it's easier to predict where you are going, for example. So again, cloud, cloud comes uh, of help also in other uh, occasions. For, for example, uh, we can have on-premise the hardware and uh, on the cloud the services, system analytics and data analytics. Something is happening about management too. So some vendors are starting to push the management on the cloud. So you, you have examples everywhere. We talked about uh, Exablox this morning, uh, Meraki, 
and uh, at any level. Uh, platform 9 on the compute stuff. So vendors are pushing the management on the cloud because it's easier. Also, it's, it, it is easier for them to deploy new releases of their software. So you can, uh, uh, you can have uh, new features without uh, installing new software. You don't need to manage the management uh, console, which is good. But about the cloud, there is more. So we are seeing uh, vendors integrating their infrastructure with the cloud. For the storage, it's quite simple. So now you can get uh, information directly from your, uh, your storage system. You can get a snapshot and you can send it to the cloud. In some cases, especially in the small, medium business, so not everyone has 40 petabytes of storage to manage, but some enterprises, some small enterprises, don't have a second site. So integrating the uh, infrastructure with the cloud, I'm not talking about hybrid cloud in the sense of uh, a few virtual machines in uh, in house and, uh, and others on the cloud on, uh, with the service provider. I'm talking of basic stuff. Just the storage, so I get a snapshot and I put them on the, on the cloud. If a disaster happens, yeah, I, I can't have a very short uh, recovery time because I need to order a new machine, but I have data. So the there is a difference between losing all data and having it somewhere. Potentially, some of these vendors can spin up a, a, a virtual machine on the cloud, so you can have access, limited access probably, to your data. So it's very easy for these small companies today to get uh, uh, access to their data, even in, uh, in case of a disaster. But they are going even more deeply in, uh, in, uh, in these scenarios. And there is something that is happening about awareness. So uh, I told uh, about, uh, I, I wrote about awareness a, a few weeks back on my, on my blog about the fact that there are these vendors, we mentioned a code after this morning, they can run some scripts in their, uh, in containers that run in their uh, array, okay? So, and there, are, there is data gravity, there is uh, Cumulo. Now, there are many vendors working on the fact that they can uh, get information on the kind of data they are uh, storing. So you have, uh, much more information. You, 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 know, you can know now which kind of the workloads are you running, uh, we, which kind of application are you using. And it's uh, very helpful because you can now understand much better what is happening uh, in all your stack. So we are, we are moving from uh, a couple of years ago, three years ago, uh, many of uh, the vendors were talking about uh, uh, application awareness. So most of the vendors talk about uh, we are VMware aware, okay? But it's going, knowing what data we are storing changed the, um, changed the thing from the bottom up because now we know what we are storing, so what kind of workloads our, our application are doing, and at the end of the day, we can do better choices on our storage. What does it mean? It means that uh, in the future, we will have this uh, uh, awareness, and it's enable smarter infrastructure. Having a smarter infrastructure, an automated infrastructure, a few uh, minutes ago, uh, someone of you told that uh, in uh, this hyperscale uh, environment, they use a lot of automation. And we need automation. So uh, like Martin said, uh, we are using a lot of Excel files. We are using a lot of scripting. We are using a lot of uh, this kind of uh, basic tools. This basic tool could be run into the storage into the switches, into the infrastructure. So we can, uh, in time, think about uh, working more on the application 
and uh, having a smarter infrastructure. So to, to recap a little bit, these smarter infrastructure that are happening a piece after the other. So we have analytics, awareness, and cloud, and they are all connected together. If you look, so we can't do uh, cloud integration without analytics, and we can't do awareness without analytics and cloud, and so on. So this is the future. And actually, if you look at this, something is happening. And uh, IT, IT infrastructure is no more about hardware. You, in the future, we will talk about uh, infrastructures, more about the software thing. I'm not saying software defined in this case, OK? But it's actually uh, a way to think about that. So we will have very uh, basic components and a lot of software running on top of these components. So we, we are seeing this software defined thing happening, uh, one piece after the other. And uh, this is the future. So back to my dishwasher. Uh, really, I came uh, to the conclusion that uh, uh, there is no reason to update my dishwasher. Because spending 500 euros for uh, the same identical dishwasher 10 years later does not make sense. I went home. I found uh, the broken piece. I went to the spare parts shop. I spent five euro, seven total, and I repair it. So, and it is in some times it's, it is what is happening in our infrastructure. So it does not make sense to change infrastructure if it is if it isn't uh, disruptive, if it isn't a different thing. So. Instead of, uh, uh, I have customers in Italy, they're saying, we are not upgrading storage anymore, the support contracts. We are buying more storage, and, so, and, and uh, if something happens, we change the pieces. We, we buy the pieces on, uh, on uh, eBay. And we are start building new infrastructures based on uh, commodity hardware that work for us. We are not talking about uh, many, many petabytes. But actually, they have uh, hundreds and hundreds of terabytes in the order of probably about one petabyte, five, uh, between 500 and one petabyte. And uh, I am seeing many customers doing this choice. So uh, except the primary storage, they are saying there is no more secondary storage. As someone said, flash and trash. This is flash and trash. You, if you are. If you have a small environment, trash will be files, probably. It will be iSCSI, OK? And flash could be the fancy uh, SSD, flash-based, uh, whatever, uh, startup, magic, new. But uh, this is what's happening in many, many companies. It does not make sense to update to an old technology. Just update to an old technology is not something that works. This is. I try to be as short as possible because we have uh, one, uh, one more session. Thank you.